The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we got? Uh, we're up uh, 16 points as we speak on the S&P cash. We had a little news come out, and I've seen more volume in the 10 minutes before the Fed announcement. Um, this this was nothing. Now, does that mean that we go higher, it rolls over now? I don't know, but I can tell you that I don't think that the risk-reward has been any better in the last two or three years than it has been right now. Uh, this market either rolls over or it doesn't. Uh, and you probably don't have that much uh, to the upside. There aren't a lot of shorts in the market. Uh, but volume has been ridiculously low all day long. Uh, even with the little uh, pop that we had, uh, we're still just at about 3.5 billion shares on a Tuesday. And that just isn't much. Certainly, uh, we're going to go through earnings that we had out this morning. Uh, talk a little bit about earnings tonight and then earnings in the morning. I suspect, though, that the weakness comes in the morning uh, as a lot of the stocks uh, down there are probably a little high in valuation uh, for the current conditions. So I'm expecting that we kind of get that little move uh, before uh, either the close today or for, uh, on the open tomorrow. Uh, when we pull back a little bit. But yeah, the, when we look at the volume, we'll go through some of the charts. Uh, it's scary, scary light. Uh, what else do we have happening right now? Well, we're up 16, as we said, on the 17 points on the S&P cash. Dow's up 155. NASDAQ's up 29. Russell's up 6. Uh, but, man, do we have a lot of stocks that are continuing uh, to roll over. Um, but uh, we'll see how things go. Uh, what else do we have? That kind of starts it. Uh, why don't we get a little history out of the way, and then we'll go on to some charts. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Uh, just about broke uh, on this day in 1885. Civil War hero and former President Ulysses S. Grant dies of throat cancer. After just completing his memoirs, he got them done because he didn't want to leave his... Uh, uh, wife and kids penniless. Uh, it ended up being a huge seller, and they ended up being rather rich. Of course, uh, a very complicated guy, an alcoholic. Uh, he got uh, alcoholism when he was sent uh, to a post in his early military career. They finally uh, convinced him to uh, retire early before the Civil War. He went off and uh, became a variety of other things, including a farmer and someone who uh, tanned uh, leather. He was kind of a miserable failure at all of them. Uh, come uh, the Civil War, though, he decided to get there and as a miserable drunk. Didn't really care much what happened, uh, but uh, he was, uh, as Lincoln said, uh, the pivotal man that won uh, the uh, Civil War for the North as uh, no one else would fight. He said with all his uh, various problems and personal uh, issues, he was the only man that would actually stand up and fight. And uh, sometimes that's all that matters. On this day in 1885, guy that had a lot of personal problems and uh, issues, but uh, he did one thing right. Uh, let's go ahead and start looking at some charts here today. Uh, I think I've got them up. Come on. There we go. Uh, wanted to look at a handful of them and see how they were doing. We'll keep an eye on it. We're just above 3,000. But uh, as I said, if you want to be short, the risk-reward does not get any better than right here. Um, 
a lot of these stocks have all day long been looking like they would roll over. I don't think the trade news is anything new. Six months ago, nine months ago, three months ago, whenever you tuned into this uh, program E, if you spell it the way they do in the UK, uh, I've said that this is going to take at least a year, if not longer. Uh, international uh, negotiations uh, are uh, meant to be slowed down to an absolute crawl uh, by people in the State Departments of all governments. Uh, they make themselves uh, necessary by causing problems. Uh, I'm not big on the State Department. For most of the 95% of the time, they're the one causing the problems, not trying to actually solve any of them. But uh, we'll keep an eye on it. Anyway, volume light, uh, no real volume on that bounce. We'll see how this happens and whether or not we get a little bit. But today is the second day of options rollover, and they continue to push out as many calls as they can extremely cheaply, which makes me think that they have very little belief, uh, at least the option market makers on the street have very little belief that those will ever pay off. Um, and got a question already. Uh, I will do it. Okay. Got, we'll answer that one in a minute. The first question was, uh, what do the options look like? And really haven't changed over the last uh, few weeks. And that is that for the most part, uh, everybody on, or at least the consensus of Wall Street is that we continue to see a market uh, that has uh, kind of a lot of particular downside in these. And of course, this is uh, a technique that really can be called the wisdom of crowds. And that is that 85% of the time, if you go to a horse racing paramutual bet track, the odds are absolutely correct over time uh, that you get kind of the same thing in options. They're not always right, but they give you a good indication. And so uh, you basically have about uh, about 302 is where you hit a wall uh, in the upside on the spies. Uh, and the only thing that uh, market makers think is that it's probably not going below 273 before August 16th of next month. So very, very little upside, at least, is what they look like. And they are probably the best at uh, doing it. Um, a 1% chance is what this is saying of over 305 uh, in the spies. So you get a little idea just how uh, dramatically the upside is limited at the present time. Uh, and it's not completely... Uh, blown away, but uh, they uh, don't want any of the downside risk to about 272 on the spy. So, got a bet. Uh, <laughs> Isn't it afraid? Yeah, yeah, that's probably true. Anyway, uh, yeah, guy that won the uh, uncivil war. We'll be back in a minute. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back. Uh, wanted to point out uh, of the light volume, Microsoft, most interestingly, down on earnings date on uh, almost 49 million shares, uh, tried to push back into it with just about 11 and a half million shares so far today. So there isn't a whole lot out here in the desire to buy anything. Uh, of course, not a lot of desire to sell anything. Uh, one of the first emails of the day asks about Snap, uh, potentially playing this for a huge squeeze. Um, there isn't a lot out here in uh, what uh, is going on in SNAP. Certainly, uh, the shorts are out of it. Uh, at one time, we had uh, 15 days to cover. Uh, that has gone down uh, absolutely significantly to, um, you know, basically about half a day. So there isn't uh, a lot going on in that. And, of course, uh, we used to have... Uh, uh, days where it was shorted 30, 40 percent uh, six months ago. The last big day of shorting was on the 9th of July, where you got 30 percent. But uh, this one's uh, a lot more like a big cap uh, in the low 12s, 15s. So no longer shorted. Uh, that's when I really get scared uh, for these, and that is that there aren't a lot of shorts in SNAP. Uh, if uh, they whiff, um, you could make a pretty good case uh, that it will try to work its way back down to the $8 mark. Uh, it's gone up. It's had a nice move, uh, but I would be extremely wary of being long this stock uh, going into earnings. There just aren't enough shorts. Uh, and it, it, that's kind of the entire market. Uh, when we see the inability to push uh, to higher levels, as we've seen uh, this 3,000 level being extremely tough resistance and no volume as they push up. Uh, kind of the same thing, and that is that there aren't a lot of people short, so it makes it very tough to shove them out of the way, get them to buy, and even drive the market a little bit higher. As uh, we watch, uh, probably nothing more uh, important today than the last 30 minutes of trading. We'll see whether or not people are really interested in buying higher highs. 
uh, without any volume, but so far not much. Uh, to, 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 what else do we have? Give me a call, 877-927-6648. Uh, been watching uh, ATI try to test uh, the July 1st high. And again, we talk about how as stocks uh, start closing under the three by three the last few days, they get a pretty huge acceleration to the downside. We are getting that in ATI already today. Now that opens up a move back to $22.50, which is the gap up from uh, June 4th. Uh, of stocks that are making lows, uh, the only thing that looks really even sort of interesting is the biotech space. Uh, got a lot of them testing lows on lighter volumes, uh, but that is the only sector I see any bright spot into Biogen uh, up today. And not a lot of volume, and of course, this is where it got blown apart uh, back on March 21st and came down with uh, 21, almost 22 million shares, back up on 2 million shares today. So it's going to take an infinite amount of time uh, for it to wear off all those people hoping to get their cash back for when this blew apart uh, back at the beginning or eh, at least in the first quarter of the year. CIT. Uh, what else do we have on that? Oh, these are all earnings, by the way. Um, not much happening. This one is holding the three by three, but uh, on just very light movement above. Again, this thing has been making lower highs and and uh, excuse me, uh, higher lows and lower highs uh, from back into March. So there's not a resolution in earnings today. For CIT. Uh, Centene, another biotech, as we were talking about, these uh, did go back and test uh, the June 9th low, 7.8 million shares, uh, with about 5.9 million shares so far, but open lower, closing a little bit better. DGX, which is Quest Diagnostics, uh, is one of the few bright spots up here. It did get back up to the previous high. Uh, you've got some decent volume, but it is kind of rolled over uh, throughout the day. So we'll keep an eye on that one. Fitbit. Again, a lot of these dog stocks, excuse me, Fitbit. Uh, Fifth Third Bank. Um, testing uh, previous 10 million share highs today. Uh, so far with about five and a half million shares. You'd like to see how this one ends up. FITB. I wonder why I thought that was Fitbit. That's it. Uh, what else do we have? We got Hasbro, the big winner of the day, winner, winner, chicken dinner. And of course, most of the big winners of earnings are all these massively shorted stocks uh, in this course in the in the uh, toy industry. But uh, they're basically saying things are fairly good. But uh, Mattel on the opposite side of this tells you a great deal. A lot of people were expecting uh, Hasbro to do the same thing that Mattel did. Mattel is actually testing its June 19th uh, high at $12.14 uh, that had 7 million shares with about uh, 2.6 million shares. So uh, rich man, poor man. And of course, rich man is Hasbro and Mattel, poor man. Uh, HOG, uh, again, a lot of these stocks massively shorted. Uh, was uh, uh, Harley Davidson and has been so for a while. I don't think anything significantly changed uh, in the last uh, few months uh, for them, but it is and does continue uh, to be uh, problematic um, for what's going on. Um, don't see a lot, like I said, uh, happening in these, but and what can you say? Just not a lot of juice uh, in um, to the downside, uh, but you got a high, a lot of high volume. And again, they tried to push it down through the previous low, didn't get it. Uh, had a fairly decent move, but for the most part, um, just continue to see a stock that's probably too heavily shorted. It may take a little bit longer to get down. Okay, what else do we have? 
in the emails coming in. Uh, okay, JetBlue Airways. Kimberly Clark, who we have on this one. Um, saying, I'm going to say, Yeah, you got a whole lot of nothing here. Still under three by three, doesn't see anything. Uh, energy was about the same on the way up. Yeah, we'll look at the next one. Uh, Lincoln Electric, which we'll talk about when we return. Good day for these guys. Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're talking about Lincoln Electric uh, earnings this morning before, uh, uh, before the bell. Uh, these guys make wall welding equipment and robotics uh, a lot of uh, industrial equipment. Uh, nice volume. Uh, of course, this thing started heading down starting in May. Went down to 75.65, back up to 88.54 today. Uh, but, uh, you know, any of these kind of, I think this is kind of a decent play on a lot more manufacturing coming back here to the United States uh, because they do make a lot of robotics 
uh, products, including welding gear, uh, but very big on the industrial scale of things. Um, Lockheed Martin, not much happening in this one today. Um, did open higher, did spike lower. Uh, it's got a little bit of everything, a little country, a little rock and roll, but uh, basically flat with what it closed at yesterday. So I don't know if you can make a great deal out of that. Uh, a lot of news, uh, them pushing hypersonic missiles and uh, aircraft, uh, but even the talk of another billion dollars worth of business doesn't seem to do much other than at the open. Uh, let's see what we have here. Let me make sure everything's updated. Yeah, 3,002 on the S&P cash. Uh, Dow's up 161, NASDAQ's up 30, Russell's up 7. Uh, one that kind of made uh, me go, hmm, and probably tells us a great deal more about the overall economy is Polte Group. It really cracked today. Uh, and again, uh, you're right back to where uh, certainly the last major run started. That was back on April 23rd. That had 7 million shares. You're already hitting 8 million shares as we get back into that today. But the housing business does look like it's slowing down, except for one area of the country, Miami Beach, where everybody that can leave uh, New York City has decided to move to, apparently. Half of the condos uh, being sold right now uh, around Miami Beach in that area, half the people that live in the five boroughs of New York City. Uh, and as I always said, I thought Escape from New York was a documentary. Go Snake Plissken. Plurus uh, Industries, another one of the big uh, winners of the day, uh, up, got some decent volume, not out of its trading range, uh, but certainly back above. Uh, of course, not breaking uh, the lower high at 9491, and of course, not breaking through the lower low, uh, the higher low at 81 bucks. Uh, but some nice movement out here, but nothing that changes any signs on the charts at all. Uh, Sherwin Williams also earnings out before the bell. It's just kind of a lackluster day going through just about a 2 million share high going back to September 21st, 2018. Uh, but no juice uh, today. At least you might, you might by the end of the day get the same volume, maybe slightly more. But there isn't a stampede into getting into these. Stanley Black and Decker. Uh, back into its gap down from the last earnings fiasco. That was on the 6th of May. Two million shares on the way down, three million shares on the way up. So it sounds like people are buying screwdrivers, uh, box planes, uh, and uh, sanders, orbital sanders. Now that'll get my uh, motor going. UTX, another one in the uh, industrial military complex. Uh, popped higher, not holding, eh, it's holding enough of it, but certainly you're going in right now, 5 million shares into a 14 million share high from June 10th, uh, not getting any farther than that. So again, the risk reward, as far as I can say, uh, in looking into earnings for the last uh, week or so, um, very muted on the upside and kind of uh, open-ended on the downside. So we'll continue to see how some of this stuff looks. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, so that takes us through earnings today. Let's go ahead and start looking at uh, earnings after the bell tonight. Uh, that starts with doo -doo 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 -doo. Visa. We'll take a quick look at that. Uh, it comes out at 4.05. This thing has done nothing but go straight up, but Volume has really done nothing uh, but uh, go down since about the 10th of June. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But this one, uh, I can't imagine a whole lot of upside. Uh, I can't imagine whether or not they don't miss earnings. They certainly, uh, your downside target would be about 160. So you got to pray that you make it on this one. Um, I'd probably be ringing the bell on this one. Uh, what else do we have? Chipotle, 
CMG. Another one that's gone up. Now this one has shown some weakness that you don't see in many others. It is below the three by three. Uh, you've got a gap at about 715, another one at uh, 695. I don't think that the earnings have justified this price. A lot of people have been short it, and I think they've been early, uh, but uh, haven't seen a lot of shorts lately. And again, that makes it much harder to drive this stock to a higher high. Uh, risk reward is significantly to the downside. High Robot, which has had some uh, very interesting moves off of earnings, both to the upside and to the downside, has done nothing but go sideways since back at the very first week of May. Uh, and I don't know if you can say anything about this one other than it's been building steam to either blow up or blow down. If you're looking for one with a lot of range after hours tonight, I think this will be it. Uh, Texas Instruments, we're going to get a little bit of uh, a taste of uh, technology in the semis today at 4 o'clock. They come out right at the bell, so you should see uh, something uh, in the futures right after. Uh, volume has been horrifically poor for the last couple of weeks as it's gone back up to test this April 24th high. It's 119.32, 13 million shares. Uh, any close lower uh, than the 3 by 3 or 9-day moving average would be a fairly good indication that you're going to test the 113 gap uh, at 113 bucks. You also have a yet another gap from about 105 to 108. Uh, energy off the May 29th low was about 20% lighter than the leg down off the April 24th high. What else do we have here? Uh, Teradyne, Navit, and CoStar. Carlisle companies. Let's take a look at Boeing. I suspect that they'll have some fairly decent damage in the Dow tomorrow from Boeing. Uh, if they can't say when their planes get back in the air, I think the market will have to eventually say that that is problematic. We don't know anything yet. Uh, and certainly from what we are hearing from airlines, uh, Boeing is not telling them anything. Uh, upside surprise, $385. Downside surprise on a way back down to a possible test of that $330.67 low. It would take you back to the June 3rd target. We'll be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Morning. We're going to go take a look at Caterpillar coming out with earnings. Uh, fairly balanced, although I would say 70% lower chance to $132 uh, to maybe a 30% chance to $141. Don't see a lot in this. Maybe they'll say something. Energy off that May 31st low has been tepid at best uh, and not rather great. Untied parcel, uh, UPS. Also, uh, before the bell, uh, again, you had uh, an okay leg from June 25th up to the high on June 16th. You've been kind of going sideways. And again, uh, this June 20th high at 103.69 has been resistance. Um, I don't see how FedEx or UPS uh, get any better with uh, Amazon taking some of the most profitable parts of their business away, especially the Christmas part. Um, I continue to think that these guys uh, basically are suffering the Amazon effect, and that is Amazon building a vertical uh, delivery market. I would assume uh, that any kind of antitrust action in Amazon, uh, when you look for it or start hearing about it, would be the time to get back into these. Amazon's kind of holding up at the highs. It's pulled back a little bit. Um, it's a monopoly. Until the news comes out, uh, it is probably okay. Uh, the problem is I wouldn't be long this one with cash. You've got to be playing the options on this in case uh, we get uh, the news, even if we probably saw action against Facebook, which I think is uh, fairly... Um, Likely, you just don't know the date when those are going to come out. Uh, but look for uh, all these to probably have a bad day if they start saying that the Justice Department is really getting active with antitrust issues. Uh, is there anything wrong? No. Is there anything right? I just don't see a catalyst for a lot higher prices in Amazon, but higher price to get to 2,000 tomorrow? Eh, probably. I don't, just don't see a lot. Uh, I see a lot of downside risks, uh, mostly uh, from uh, political and uh, uh, antitrust issues in the Justice Department. Uh, to, 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 what else do we have? Uh, okay, got that. Uh, Northrop Grumman. Uh, so the last of the industrial military complex will be out uh, in the morning. Uh, this one's I had trouble holding the previous June 10th high. That was uh, $323.73 with uh, 1.1 million shares. Got about 1 million shares to the downside today. I think probably a narrow range on this one. I don't see a lot on the upside or downside. Now, we've had probably 15 uh, events in the last couple of weeks uh, from the Russians and the Chinese uh, trying to fly into South Korea, 
uh, to a handful of other uh, big issues where China is trying to move its uh, or flex its uh, muscles, a little bit of saber rattling. I think, especially with Iran, probably the most likely uh, to get out of hand and quickly, uh, you'll see these things go higher. I don't want, they don't look good, but I don't think uh, there is a good uh, reason uh, to uh, short them either, just not much upside. Now, Northrop Grumman uh, would make probably a great deal of money. Uh, da, da, da. Let me make sure that I'm not just having a, uh, a uh, uh, oh, a senior moment. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I don't think they're going to make as much on this. I was thinking maybe they had some big contracts also for the FY22, which they've moved a bunch of to uh, into the Middle East. But it looks like all the money is Lockheed, Boeing, and General Dynamics. Um, but it certainly looks like uh, when you want to scare somebody, you put in that plane because without afterburners, it can cruise at 1,600 miles an hour and not be seen by radar, although they're going to upgrade that. I thought they may get a contract for some things in that plane, but maybe I'm mistaken on that. Um, anyway, keep an eye on that, but it's, I think it's just a matter of time before the Iranians uh, continue to push, uh, the Chinese continue to push into South Korea. Uh, some other issues, they are um, eh, getting ready to uh, try something, I suspect. Uh, to, to, what else do we have? Uh, Granger, eh, it didn't tell us a lot. Uh, General Dynamics, also in the morning. Uh, to, to, to. Again, at least lately, uh, lower high and uh, higher lows. Uh, this is back into this huge day of April 24th that had a reversal. Uh, from 193.11 with 3 million shares. Got into it with 1 million shares on the 16th. Uh, you're just kind of hanging out here. Uh, you know, could you get up to 193? You could. Uh, downside projections, though, are 175 on a whiff. So, again, risk reward, very tough to be long going into these earnings uh, after the bell and before the bell tomorrow. Okay, what else do we have here? Okay. Uh, okay. Let me get this. Okay, what else do we have? Freeport MacMoran, also going off in the morning. FCX. That's certainly, well, you got a 30 million share test back on the 19th as you got back into the $11.79 high. Energy is okay. You got a nice volume in there on the 19th a couple days ago into that high. I don't see a lot today, though, very light volume on that. Let's see what else we have. Okay. NASDAQ, North Folk, uh, North Folk Southern, NSC. Quick look at this. Uh, in a nice range, of course, CSX dropped the Chalupa on their earnings. Go back and look at that. Um, that's probably put a little bit of uh, issues in North Folk. Um, but again, you're right in the middle of the range. I don't see a decent play. I do see, you know, a fairly decent test up at that 211.49 high from April 24th. Uh, that had uh, 2.7 million shares. Got into it with 1.6 million shares. Of course, you rolled on the uh, CSX stuff. 190.
188 in that range for a target. We'll be back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And, uh, well, we're at up 18 points on the S&P cash, but guess what? We've got little or nothing on volume, just cracking 4 billion shares with one hour left to go. So certainly we need to be up here with about 12 billion shares. Uh, we're cracking 4 billion as we speak. So this is one of the lightest volume tests of previous highs. Now, maybe volume does come in until it doesn't. I have to look at this as the glass half empty, not half full. Of course, uh, the big... Probably the big movement out here, more than the uh, S&P and the, the indexes, is the dollar, uh, up 46 cents to 97.40. That kind of tells you a great deal about uh, the weak dollar theory. Uh, you'd really think that if there was a lot of other issues going on, we'd be weaker. Uh, some discussion about whether or not the Brexit deal uh, will push more money into the United States. Uh, of course, uh, we've got a new uh, prime minister over there. He's saying that he will have Brexit by Halloween. I don't know if that means that you get a little bit of trick or treat. Certainly see that. Uh, let's see if there's anything else out here in the news before we close. Um, again, I'm kind of looking for a very weak open tomorrow on some of the weaker stocks, especially in the Dow and then the uh, S&P 500. 
in the morning. If we're going to see uh, a, 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 a hiccup in earnings, I suspect it will be in the morning. But uh, we'll have to see what they say. I just, it's just very hard for me to see uh, the market up, you know, another 10 points on trade talks that are not going to prove any fruit for probably six months down the line. I would be wary of them. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. I'll be back tomorrow, same bat channel, same bat time. Uh, listen to Tom O'Brien for all the earnings tonight in the 3 to 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time hour. Be back tomorrow.